Hello, everybody. Welcome to season one, episode 56 of Da 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 I Hate Napkin. I'm your co host, Eric. Um, and I want to hear what you hate. So just send it to info at the hate napkin.com. That's info at the hate napkin.com. Also joined from uh, somewhere in the killing fields of Phnom Penh, Polly from Bali, our sound engineer. Wow, crickets. Okay, we're also joined. <laughs> Where Polly from Bali is going to be doing the show in mime today. This could get interesting. Hopefully, Carla, our special guest in Burnt Corn, Alabama, is not going to be doing the show in ASL. Oh, there you go. There's the sign. Uh, no, I wouldn't do that to you, Eric. Um, that's the universal sign for free abortions, isn't it? Uh, something like that. <laughs> okay, Carla, of course, is uh, in Burnt Corn. She's the... Um, uh, clinician in chief at the local Dairy Queen, <laughs> and the head of the Underground Railroad at the local Burnt Corn Editor and Tribune. Uh, and let's see if you're on YouTube, Polly from Bali has opened up a whiteboard. Ah, that's, <laughs> that's either a sideways middle finger or the side profile of an erect rhinoceros. I, I just did. I don't have to get out of this. No, actually, if you if you do give it a forty five degree turn, it's the state of Florida. So I understand why they're, why they're hard to tell apart. <laughs> okay, now we apparently have some sort of a target. I. Folks, if you're if you're joining us, I would suggest you head on over to YouTube for the rest of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found the button. I couldn't find close whiteboard anywhere. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, that was a YouTube classic moment, folks. I'm not even going to try to tell you what just happened there, but <laughs> some poor stick figure just got it <laughs> right up there in the annals of hate, shall we say? Okay, so. Uh, we are coming off the heels of episode 624, this being episode 56, and um, I don't know about you, but whew, I got a lot of adrenaline of hate still pumping in my veins, my, uh, my deep thrombosis veins. So uh, let's start off with, uh, does anybody other than me have something they hate this week? Yes. All right, let's go. Childproof caps. Like that they wear on their heads? No, on pill bottles. Oh, Lord Almighty. Explain. Well, it was so impossible for me to get the lid off of the pill bottle. I finally took a hammer and smashed it. Oh, no, this was one of those. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, <laughs> clearly you're a child because you can open it. But he's a this was one where you had to hold down the tab with one hand and open it with the other, which is fine unless your thumbs are so arthritic that you can't hold the fucker down. Actually, oh, also, the, my actually, dog. That's a really good point because the vast majority of people who need pills <laughs> are people <laughs> who have arthritis in their finger. Mm -hmm. so can we please find a different childproof method that doesn't involve? But, you know, just generally, I'm guessing that you're having problems with like the pickle jar and other things, too. No, uh, no, I have tools that open those. Okay. There are three. I'm not going to ask what that means. <laughs> there are three people <laughs> in this house, and I am the only one of the three that can actually open a jar of anything. <laughs> no, I got one of those silicone things that you put over the top of the jar that it grips the lid, pops right open. I don't have a problem with that. Childproof caps don't work that way. What's what is in the bottle that's childproofed that you're trying to open? The dog's medicine. <laughs> it isn't even for me. It's for the goddamn Listen, dog. Let's be clear. I think it's kind of odd that you need to build a can a, ca a container that the dog can't get into. <laughs> Listen, if you're a chomper who's eating eating the worm killing medicine just admit it carly you don't have to go through this these hoops and 
smoke and mirrors. Why, why is the worm if, killing medicine and the de horse, the horse, whatever tranquilizer? Why should that be childproof? Right. Well, and if, if all, that's what, if, a, why don't you just get a vaccine? First of all, he's a basset hound, not a horse. And second of all, how do you tell me? <laughs> What's the difference between a basset hound and a horse? I don't know about six feet and thousand pounds. I don't know. Which, okay, it, or, is there any chance we're going to get a basset hound sighting today? Yeah, I don't know. Where are you? You little shit, Just chewing something up. Come here, wait. I, I can give you a horse sighting if you want me to. No, we already had that on the whiteboard. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, is that Waylon? That's Waylon. Waylon, say hello to the audience, folks. This is definitely a YouTube friendly episode. Hello. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is the most beautiful uh, foal I've ever seen. I know. Can you believe it? He's almost ready to be turned into a glue container. Oh, he's that's... getting so big, he's hard to hold now. Oh, he's hard to pick up. How can you possibly hate anything with that lovely creep? Oh, let me tell you my favorite basset hound story. So I have a friend that had a basset hound named Sinclair, and they were in love with this animal. Well, he got old. He was a senior. He was ready to be put down, and he kind of got paralyzed on his backside. So they bought a little red wagon like a little little red wagon yeah and they hooked him, his back up to it and they would they would cart him around backwards <laughs> to get to places <laughs> but she had to milk his bladder like four to five times a day well that's devotion i mean jesus if i could only i'm i'm when i get to when i head to the home <laughs> i hope there's some woman out there that will milk my bladder four to five times a day I'll bet. Look at this dog's ears. He has the longest ears I have ever seen. He steps on them when he walks. I think everybody, you know what? I think if everybody just had a basset hound, we wouldn't need the hate napkin. I, I have a feeling Carla's probably going to quit the show within moments. No. <laughs> well, no, yeah. I have more hate to give. All right, so okay, childproof caps. I can that, yeah, they're a pain. Uh, you know, it used to be you could just, you know, get your cocaine and whatever else you needed from the pharmacy. <laughs> and we're just come in a little paper bag and you just sit it there. And if the kids wanted to get into it, they got into it. You know, what's the big deal? It's just controlled substance. And let's be clear, like most of these controlled substances come from something on the planet. They're natural. So why do we need to cap any of this shit anyway? Do you know what was in the bottle? Another bottle. But this is like a, a babushka doll? No, it was a bottle of medicine for his ears. Inside the bottle? Inside the childproof cap. And it's like, why can't you just hand me the bottle and let me put it up in the cupboard? Oh my God, that's sinister. It's stupid. No, it's not stupid. It's sinister. It's evil. I agree. It goes on the hate napkin. All right. Uh, I'm looking at a bunch of shit here, but I think I've already said, oh, oh, that's right. I hate Richland Library. I hate the fucking cunts that run Richland Library. And I can't wait for this episode to air because I was having a mental health crisis a couple of weeks ago, recognized by two physicians and a disability insurance company. And once a disability insurance company actually recognizes the condition, my God, it's a condition because they don't want to recognize it. But while I was on disability and FMLA, the fucking bitches and assholes that run Richmond Library called me up and said, you have 24 hours to resign or we will terminate you. Yeah. Richland Library, go oh, fuck themselves. But one of the things that I really hated about Richland Library in the last couple of uh, months was they eliminated a song from story time, children's story time across the board. Um, a song that I used to teach my daughter and we would have fun with it called Five Little Monkeys. Five little monkeys sitting in a tree. 
teasing Mr. Alligator, can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Alligator. Quiet as can be. And snap, snap, monkey right out of the tree. And then you go to four monkeys, and then three monkeys, and then two monkeys, and then one monkey. And it's a great way to teach little kids how to count one to five and backwards, which is important. But no, this is a racist song, apparently. Five Little Monkeys is a song born in white hooded hate. So nobody can sing Five Little Monkeys anymore at Richland Library to children because it's a racist song. It's not, but that's just the corporate glam fucking veneer of the stupid place that I don't no longer work for. So instead, I've come up with a novel song to replace it. Okay, let's say it's an, a racist song. You know, all right, let's get rid of it. Let's replace it with five little meth heads sitting in the tree, teasing Mr. Rehab, can't catch me. Along comes a hypodermic needle, quiet as can be, and stabs that meth head right in the knee. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. You think that's really age, age appropriate? Uh, as much as the child proof <laughs> cap is. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, it's a scary world out there. We have meth heads sitting in the family courtyards of your local Richmond Library branch. Why can't we let children know why they're out there humping the caterpillar toy that they're supposed to play inside, smearing shit all over the walls? But, you know, who knows if said assistant manager calls the police to say, um, can we please get rid of the person urinating in the, in the flowers next to the children where they play? I get written up. So anyways, I hate Richland Library and I hate corporate libraries. Libraries today that feel like they're so cutting edge that they have to toss common sense and five little monkeys out the window. Wait, so your local library is banning books? No, my mom, <laughs> Richland Library, the, my employer for the past seven years, isn't just banning books. They're incinerating them by the tens of thousands every year. And I have the pictures to show it because I used to be in management. And me and the head of outreach used to jump into the dumpster trying to save books that we could put on the local public buses and hand out to seniors and uh, nursing homes, <laughs> trying to give them books before the library actually got around to uh, get this burning the books by the tens of thousands. Where were they so, burning them? Big old fucking fire pits. No, I mean, they were sending them off to incineration center. Literally, burning books. <laughs> by the tens of thousands a year. We were instructed that if there was anything so much as a tiny blemish on a book, it had to be recycled, that is, incinerated. Instead yeah. of donated. Uh, correct. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So you can't sing Five Little Monkeys, but you can reenact Fahrenheit 451. Oh, wow. <laughs> Literature. Yeah. So uh, fuck Richland Library. I hate them. Literally, I hate them. Cheers. <laughs> Anything you hate, Mr. Paul? Just spent the time at the beach. And I'm going to go with uh, smoky hotel rooms. When you check mm. into a hotel room and it smells like an ashtray. Ugh. I thought that wasn't supposed to happen anymore. It's not supposed to happen anymore. But every time I check into a hotel, it smells like smoke. So the first thing I do is open the doors and windows run the air con, ask for a fan. But you know the smell of smoke, it just lingers, man. So why are people smoking inside of hotel rooms? That they're not supposed to be smoking. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm a former smoker. I used to smoke outside of the room because that's what I was asked to do. Me too. But another thing, I finally put some lavender in my car. I, I'm tired, you know, everybody knows I drive for Uber at night. I am so tired of stanky man. It's never, by the way, stanky woman, ever. In the, in the five, I just got to notice that I'd completed my 5,000th trip. 
in the 5,000 previous passenger fares, I've never had stanky woman get in the car. It's always stanky man. And stanky man always either reeks. Uh, it's a combination always. It's always a combination of B.O., pot, and, and tobacco. And I'm a former smoker. But if you reek so bad of tobacco, pot, and body odor that I have to double mask up, put all my windows down on an interstate highway, You've got some fucking issues in your life, pal. I almost, I mean, I can guarantee you that I'm picking you up from a place where you live in the basement of your mother's house. It might even be a listener of the show while I take you en route to your overnight shift at the Walmart or Kroger. But how the fuck does your manager let you in the door reeking of this? Jesus Christ. I'm actually kind of glad we're in the COVID area because I usually conveniently have three masks that I can put over my fucking face. And you can still breathe? Yeah, I would rather almost not breathe. <laughs> I would rather have my face in uh, Waylon's asshole. Licking. Well, Waylon would appreciate it if you didn't. Yeah, but I would rather have that than have to deal with one more stanky man. Oh, I mean, yesterday I had another, I had two stanky men get in the car. Two stanky men, three masks, long drive. Well, doesn't Windows it just linger down. too? Like, doesn't, doesn't the next customer just think you stink? <laughs> yeah, no, actually, here's what happens is I get out, I overtly spray Febreze all over the car while they're walking to their house. Oh my God, and nice. Nice. And then the next person I pick up, I'm like, yes, I know it smells like I just fucking, you know, made it with a rotting rhinoceros carcass. But in actuality, it, you know, I just drained a $6 can of Febreze in the car so to get, try to get rid of Mr. Stanky. So, yeah, I get it. People who stink up places, definitely on the hate napkin. But actually, I, think- I have a hate na- napkin item that I wanted to bring up. People... Because they should interrupt Carla before she speaks. No, they... no, let him go. Oh, no. That I, have, no I have an important one. People, no right. people who show their pets on Zoom calls, like we don't want to <laughs> see, we don't want to see your cute little pet on the Zoom call. We don't want to see Especially if he's it, on tonight's right? menu. That's just not right. right. We don't want to see. We just don't want to see the pet on the Zoom call. Aww. No, no, no. What's his name or her name? Is that, that little awesome. Mushu? <laughs> okay, sorry, you can go, Carla. My, no, no, no. My, was that was that was that dinner? <laughs> I'm sorry, hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> you know what's funny is that like people, are, you can't say that. That's racist. How is joking about a dog being dinner racist? Especially, well, since especially, you, especially when you, you have like dog restaurants. Uh, I was just gonna place. say, don't you actually have like haven't you had neighbors that actually sell dogs as food? Right. So how is that possible? You know what? <laughs> That's what we've come to. Is like you're in the culture next door. Somebody actually breeding dogs to be eaten, and if we make a joke joke about dogs, dog as food, not dog food, but dogs as food. We're racist. Whereas you could actually take your camera and point to people <laughs> next door eating dogs. I could go to the dog restaurant. <laughs> but, that makes, but we're we're the racists. <laughs> Five little dog eaters. <laughs> okay, who's got something for the napkin? Anybody? Yeah. People who throw People. garbage out car windows. Does that include ham? No, ham is garbage. <laughs> I once saw a, a stand-up comedian. You know, some, some, I don't know. I think it was in the Catskills, actually. Literally, there was a comedian. He made a joke about uh, like people tossing cigarettes out their windows at night is like dynamite. You're driving along. It's like, holy shit! <laughs> yeah, don't don't toss your butts out the fucking window. Don't touch your. I, I I'll have to say there's an exception to it. It's okay to do it in South Carolina because this state is just the world's big. It's the world's ashtray. So why not? 
just 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 throw it if you need in fact folks if you feel the need to throw your garbage out the window just head to south carolina get over the border toss it all out and then head back to where you're going well i live on a pretty busy street and when the first thing that i have to do every morning is go out with a bag and pick up all the trash off my lawn it's like fast food containers beer bottles you know it's not like severed fetuses well i i i can't swear that that one part of it but um mostly it's like paper and styrofoam and that kind of crap and it's like what right do you have to treat you know treat my property like a garbage can Ah, right. Okay. Well, let's be clear. Men have the right to throw out their trash out the window. Mm. It's the women throwing their trash out the window that we really should have a problem with, especially minority women. Right? I mean, if there's anything we have learned at this point, it's that men can do whatever the fuck they want. Clearly, you're not reading the room. I mean, I'm just saying. Wait, is that a middle bear claw? Oh no, this is a uh, this is a uh, device used to remove the testicles from oh. men. Ah, I had those removed a long time ago. So I... it doubles as a back scratcher. <laughs> yes, people. What the fuck are you thinking? You know, it can can it just sit in the seat till you get home? Don't you have a Herbie Kirby or a dumpster? Apparently or at least a, not. Can't you put it in your own front yard? Would be nice. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I hate to sound crabby about it, but after a while, you know, it wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't an everyday thing. And I'm nice enough to go pick up all the trash out of my neighbor's lawns on each side of me so that at least it looks like there's a small section where we give a damn you are such a karen i know i'd like to speak to the manager that reminds me of uh, i know we're not supposed to talk about louis ck but it does remind me of a louis ck line where he said basically isn't every city an ashtray i mean isn't that what it is I mean, what's what's so bad about throwing your garbage out in a human habitation? That's pretty much what human habitation is. It's just piles and piles of garbage. Who cares if it's outside or inside? And yeah, yeah. who cares about having your dick in your pants? Just have it out of your pants without asking other pants? people. Why do we need yeah. pants? Just I mean, have your dick out. Have Okay. Women should have to at least wear spandex in the Walmart. That's what I mean. Oh, here they do. And tube tops. <laughs> oh, you know, that, I missed my tube top moment when we were railing on the Supreme Court justices. I don't know. Why does Clarence Thomas wear one? Well, I bet his wife. Okay, so what do you hate more? <laughs> no, no we, sh we can't go back there. Mrs. Thomas in a tube top. <laughs> or anything. I don't know. Okay, what else do I hate? I'm just... I know what I hate. I hate people with cerebral palsy. <laughs> do you think they can help it? Let me tell you this story, okay? So everybody in this show knows that for... Most of the past 11 years I've been single. Well, I wonder why I'm stuck. That is such a curiosity to me. Hmm. Okay, Randy Rainbow. All right. So I met this woman. She's a wonderful, well, I thought she was wonderful. She's actually very beautiful, very intelligent, and she has cerebral palsy, which she told me from the beginning. And I said, so. And she was like, what do, you, what do you mean so? Usually people run away. I was like, well, why would I run away? You seem like a very nice person. She's, and so we talked about her condition. And, and now you're here making fun of her. No, I'm not making fun of her. I hate her. 
<laughs> Big difference. I, there's no making fun of cerebral palsy. I'm not making fun. I'm telling a tale. Okay, so why do you hate her? We talked about her condition and she explained it to me. And I said, that doesn't bother me. You seem like a nice person. Why would I not like, you know, want to be with you because you can't walk? very well or you you walk in a you know in a funny manner you it looks like you know you're an administrator at the, at the ministry of silly walk that doesn't that doesn't bother me you seem like a nice person so we continued to talk and have conversations and we finally got together and spent a lovely evening together um and you know we walked all yeah, she, she can walk she just walks really funny and it's you know not a problem we went to a museum together had a great night an intimate night next morning <laughs> i'm out the door nice to know you i can't wait to see you again um not to tell tales and all next thing i get texted from her she texts me within five minutes so i assume you don't mind if i sleep with other people <laughs> now <laughs> i'm five minutes down the road headed home <laughs> And I get a text that says basically, you don't, I, you don't care if I fuck other folks, do you? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? No, yeah. are you fucking kidding me? She slept with you on the first date. You don't. Yeah, but that's not the first thing you say to somebody afterwards. I would never do that to somebody. I was just like, that was a, such a gut punch. It was like, you know, how about you know, this was wonderful. And, you know, I can't wait to see you again. If not, do you mind if I fuck somebody else tonight? Oh, she didn't feed your little ego. Oh. You know, that's, that's not ego. I wouldn't do that to somebody else. That's just consideration. I think you didn't get one of the palsy hand jobs and that's what you really <laughs> wanted to get. And that's why you dated her in the first place because you wondered what that was like. And uh, you figured clear, you figured the wrong. funny walk was a bonus because people would be like, "Oh wow, he must have really, must really tap that." Look at the way she's walking. And now you're disappointed that you can't. You didn't never got the first thing, and the second thing you can't do again. Let's be clear. I wasn't looking for the palsy hand job. It was the palsy foot job. All right. <laughs> I just, I just. It was so, I, all I got to say, listen, this show is, if nothing about honesty, is that a good bit of what we talked about those first few weeks was her disability and her condition and all these things related to it. And it was, you know, it didn't prevent me from wanting to be with somebody. But the first thing out of her mind afterwards was, I can't wait to jump in the sack with somebody else. It's just like, you just made the first two weeks of this meeting all about your condition and disability and me listening to you and talking about it. And the first thing that you could say when I was out the door was, I can't wait to be with somebody else. I just was like, you know what? It just shows me that it doesn't, you can be disabled and still be an asshole. Just because you've got something about you that's a little off or a condition that you have to overcome doesn't mean that you can't be a fucking asshole too. Do you know how many men in the history of the world have done the same thing to women? I'm not all the men in the history of the world. <laughs> That's the thing. That doesn't justify, <laughs> wait a second, it, just, it doesn't justify the millions of men that have done something stupid. Just because, just because there's one group that has acted in a stupid way for a long time doesn't mean that other groups can't be stupid too. I guess, if anything, I'm just disappointed in humanity. Okay, so the cerebral palsy woman basically said you weren't any good in bed. I beg the difference. And I've, I've, you know, I've been told like, hey, you're not, you're not good at making coffee. So then I learned more about making coffee. I bought the filters. I got the no, sixty. You know, maybe you just need to. Uh, Maybe you don't know how to please a cerebral palsy woman. Maybe there's a special technique. Uh, no, 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 no. I think he's offended because he got treated the way men treat women. No, I got offended because <laughs> I got treated. No, no, no. Let's clarify. I got offended because I got treated like an asshole. That's well, why. And all, it, you know, all I want to show is that, you know what? 
it's ridiculous to think that people who have issues or disabilities or handicaps or whatever you want to call it can't are be. nicer people than others. Yeah, they're not nicer. Pe- you know what? Well, here's the thing, this is, Eric. This is, they're not. They're, they're Eric, not nice. People. There's they're a lot, nice. of, Eric. There's a lot of fish in the sea. Have you considered dating some Down syndrome women? <laughs> there. Uh, <laughs> my bucket list <laughs> go down the list of disabilities dude well, listen not until i get to the mount olympus of paraplegic <laughs> i think that's the, a woman that would be satisfied with you like one that's actually paralyzed from the neck down then she would be like uh, oh, probably from the nose didn't, down because didn't, if she can't talk Wouldn't that be your ideal woman? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so let's let cerebral palsy woman was just a step in a it was just a stepping stone. <laughs> I mean, a, a kind of a and it's kind of funny because she walks like I was gonna say it's a mis, it's a it's a misstepping stone. <laughs> Maybe she just has a stone in her shoe and doesn't have a cerebral palsy. Did you oh, are you sure? Wait, she had something wrong with her wrist, Carla. Carla, you're really jumping on the bandwagon here, jumping on the wheelchair. You you have less than a minute and a half to wrap up this. All right, folks. Sad so, scorn. Please send us the handicapped people that you hate to info at hatenapkin.com. I'm cutting. I'm cutting all of this. No, you're not. It's perfect. Listen, paraplegic people, disabled people, you know, people with one leg. People with elephantitis, they're all assholes just as much as the rest of us. <laughs> but tell us your hate story of the handicapped person to info at the hate napkin.com. That's not true. We don't hate the handicapped. They hate us. Info at the hate napkin.com. You can visit our site, the hate napkin.com, and join us over at the Book of Face, Elon Musk's Twitter, and IG Instagram. This is your co host. Eric trying to peer his head in turtle-like fashion out of the painter!